this is goes and forms and this is perfect if you're looking for more qualified leads or just to obtain information via interactive forms. They have more than 175 conversational templates and the best of it all, you can get started completely free. Let's try it out. Goes and Forms is part of a company containing three different products. We have Goes and Forms, then we have Optinly, which I have previously reviewed, and Optinly is a simple pop-up builder for your website. And lastly, then we have Goes and Growth, and Goes and Forms is a part of Goes and Growth directly. But let's dive in and set up our first form. So in here, in Goes and Forms, I have been playing around a little bit with some forms. And when you set up your first form, you can either create it from scratch or you can choose from templates. And I will recommend you to start from templates because this will make your life a lot easier. And it's so easy and fast for you to get from not having a form to have a fully fledged form with functionality, logic and everything. So let's see here where we can see all of their different templates that we can use. And I think I will go with a simple FAQ question form. I will then either choose preview the template or I can use the template. So this is how the template look like. I can play around with it and see how it acts when I enter my name and everything. So I think this looks good. So let's use this template here. So now we have the FAQ set up here and we have a name for the form and we'll just keep FAQ question form. I will press continue. So now we're in the form builder and on the left side, we have all of our questions. In the top, we have a menu of different modules we'll go through. And on the right side, we have settings for either the questions, the theme of the entire form and just overall settings. So as we go through the different steps, you can see that every time I click on a step or a question, then I can edit it over here. I can change the name of it, but I cannot change what type of question it is. But let's try and add a new question as the first thing. And I would like to add rating. So very simple, I will just ask how was this form? And then they can rate from right now zero to five stars. Over here you can choose how many stars, they call it steps here, but how many stars they should be able to rate. What type it is, is rating, whether it's required or not. And then we can choose the shape as well, but right now only stars is the shape that we can choose. You can see we can set labels as well, but I will not enable that for now. So now you can see how fast and simple that was to add an extra question. That is just how easy it is to work with and the logic which I will show you just in a moment is even easier. On the right side, we can also choose from different themes here where I just simply click on the theme and then it changes my entire form. Everything from colors on the background to text and everything. It's very easy, but if there's no theme that is working for you, then you can head over to my themes and then you can create your own theme. You simply just give it a name. You set what colors for the questions, the description. You can even set the button text color. We can't change the text of the buttons yet. And right now when I have to find my font here, I can't search for it. So you have to scroll really far if you're using a form like Yoast or something similar. But just to show you again, before we move on to logic, you can see here all of the different fields that we can use, which is basically questions. They do also have payment as a field or a question in this case. Maybe you can even call it a step, which integrates with Stripe, but that is on the paid version. You can also use it for net promoter score. Very simple to set up. You can see a score from zero to 10 and then you're good to go. But now let's move on to the logic part. So within the logic part, it is very simple to begin with. You can see that right now there's no logic. So right now they just go from one question to the next question and so further. But for each of these questions, we can add logic. So let's say you have a step where if they answer X, then they will skip the next step. It's in here you do that. So here we have first name. So we will say if first name does contain the word Philip in this case, then we will make it jump to the question we just made, which is how was this form? So this is just a simple example. Of course, it does make a lot of sense, but that's just a simple example of how you can add logic. We can also add another condition, 
where it has to be either both of these conditions fulfilled or just one of them. Right now, we will just keep it as is. I will delete this one again. And you can see out here visually how it looks like. So right now, if my name that I enter is, is Philip, then I will skip these four questions here and move directly to the new question. I really like how they have set it up here. Very simple with a visual appeal of how it is working because often this logic part can really get difficult. Though I will say that all of these different questions has different logic. So for instance, if we go all the way down to the question that we made before, here you can see that right now it is saying that it needs to be either greater than, equal to, or less. So this means that when it's a text format, then we have conditions like it contains this or it is exactly this. But when it's a number format, then you can do the way where you say it needs to be greater than this or lower than this. But the main functionality that I like about the logic is definitely the visualization. It's so easy to understand how your logic is working. Now moving on to the next module, which is integrate. First, when I read through Gosen's website, I didn't get an understanding of their integrations and I think they should brag more about it because they have almost 25 native integrations and this is very impressive. There is one integration we're missing though and that is Calendly. Of course, we can use Zapier to make an integration all the way through Calendly, but it's super simple to set up these integrations. When you click connect, then you're asked to either, in this case, sign in with Google. If we go to MailChimp, they have a different way that you need to enter your API key. The same for Paply here, we need to enter a webhook URL and so further. So that's how it goes all the way down. And I'm really impressed to see this amount of integrations. Let's hope they keep on adding integrations. Now for the next module, we have the share module. And I think this module is really great, especially if you're using the net promoter score, because within the net promoter score, you often want to show it like a little widget in the bottom or in the side that can slide out. And that is possible here. So you can see we have a side tab here. We can do a standard where it's full screen. We can do a pop-up. We cannot do the bottom section here, which I would really like to have for the net promoter score but otherwise I will use the side tab here. And then we can choose the button text, the colors as well. And then we can choose the domain we want to execute this code on. And by code, I mean, of course, the entire widget. You can also use either Shopify app or the WordPress plugin. They have done that as well. So on top of the integrations, they also have plugins and apps for that. But otherwise you can always just copy the URL here for the form when we have published it and then you can check how it is working. So let's publish the form here. So now we have the URL here. You can either go to the URL or you can just press preview up here. And with the preview section, we can see it in desktop or in mobile version. So for now, I'll keep it on desktop here. And then as first name, let's try and enter Philip to see if our logic is working. And it is very well working. We now have the question where we're asking, how was this form? I will give it a couple of stars. And then I'll move on to the net promoter score. Again, let's give it a nine and then submit. So now we have our form ready. We have tested it. It's working very well. So now we can publish it. We can also change the last page here to contain different text element. We can add description or we can change the button to have a different name or maybe can redirect to something else. Maybe you have made this form so they can get an ebook. In this case, you would add the URL to the ebook on the button here so they could download it. Just to get back to the share module here, the last thing I would really like to see is a JavaScript SDK. Typeform is the direct competitor to Ghost and Form and they have a lot of the same functionality, but Typeform has this JavaScript library that makes it easy to integrate into more sophisticated systems. If they could add that so we could show this form in different settings or depending on different conditions that would really help us build this to the next level. But the last module is results here. And within results, we have the insights where we can see how many has visited, started, submitted, and so further. We can see geographical reach as well, and that's it. I can't really figure out if I want to add Google Analytics because I get more extensive information or I just want them to elaborate their functionality so I can see even more information about who are doing what and where they're coming from and so further. But for now, I think it's fine. 
We can also get a summary here where we can see how many has answered the question, skipped it, or maybe just they didn't even fill anything out. We can also here see responses. And even though there is a response, it's telling me that there are no responses yet. So I think overall, Ghost Inform is really an interesting software. And I think we can get very far with small tweaks. And recently, as I mentioned earlier, I have reviewed Optinly. And Optinly and Ghost Inform are part of the same company. But one thing that's worrying me right now is that Gosen, which is the overall company having these three products, now has to divide all of these developers through three different products. And already at this point, I have felt that Optinly has been developing very slowly. So the fact that they now have three different products, it can be a little bit worrying, but maybe we'll see that it's not the case and they will just rapidly speed up everything and develop everything in a very fast manner We'll have to wait and see. That being said, I feel that Ghost and Forms is a very intuitive platform to build these forms. And the fact that they are the cheapest on the market as they're showing on their website, it just adds up to all of the integrations, the Shopify ad, WordPress integration, and all of this functionality. It's really impressive. So I'm hoping that they will keep this up and in the near future, I know that they're working on a picture question. So we can ask a question and they can answer with pictures. And they are also adding functionality to make it easier to upload multiple pictures, multiple files even, and add more ending pages. So imagine you are making a calculator for your product. Let's say you're an agency and you sell a website. A website can cost everything from a couple of hundred dollars to thousands of dollars. It really depends on what the website needs to contain. So with these multiple conditional end landing pages, then we can send them to the right landing page depending on what their answer has been in the formula. So I think this is really powerful as well. So based on all of this, I want to give Ghost and Forms four stars. It's really impressive how fast they have managed to develop all of this functionality. But Typeform is still ahead with the JavaScript library, more question types and overall just more functionality. But if you want to watch the Optinly review, as I've mentioned earlier, then you can watch it up here and get started on your pop-ups. Thank you so much for watching. Let's catch up on the next one.